Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 285 for Monday, December 21st, 2020. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians, or at least desiring to be working musicians. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here on the central coast of California, it's Paul Kent. Yeah, man. How are you today? I'm good. It is, it's like 75 here. It is, <laughs> it's spring. It's just unbelievably beautiful. <laughs> I desire to be outside rocking and rolling. You know, it's, it's just gorgeous, but we're getting ready for the holiday. That's my good. youngest daughter showed up uh, last night, drove down from San Francisco. Uh, my oldest daughter got here a couple of weeks ago. So we have our own little bubble here. Uh, they got tested before they walked to the door. Sure. And uh, yeah, uh, we're, yeah, we're happy. We're ready to go. That's we good. Got three dogs in the house now, which is good. Oh, that's great, man. A full house. Mm-hmm. I get, that's really full nice. House. That's great. Congratulations. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's going to be fun. How about you? Uh, yeah, my, I mean, my kids have been home from school now for A few weeks, I guess, is right. My son came home. Oh, no. My kids have been home for about a month because my son Mm. came home right before Thanksgiving. Uh, Colleges, at least my kids' colleges, which I think many did, who were many colleges who were able to make it to Thanksgiving. The plan was leave before Thanksgiving, finish the semester at home. We'll see you in, you know, late January or whatever that, you know, day for the next, the spring semester is, which is smart. They don't want to. Uh, you know, send them home for a week and bring them back. That sure. that's you know a big COVID mess. But um, yeah, so yeah, so we've been yeah, you know, we we've got our bubble back and it's all you know we're we're good. So yeah, that's good, man. I um y- hearing you talk about we have a lot of stuff to talk about in the show today. We've got uh, we've some got some Beatles stuff to talk about. We've got some online rehearsal. We got an email from the bishop here, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, y- hearing you talk about your uh, seventy five degree weather when you know maybe uh, twenty four hours ago, I was considering invoking the four inch rule before heading out to the final show of this holiday happy what hour. Is, what thing. is that? The four inch rule. So uh, when it, we, it, and and the folks at the theater didn't know about the four inch rule until yesterday. So I may have, I, I was joking that I might have to inform them of and simultaneously invoke the four inch rule. And it has to do it's with. A Ham- it's a Hamilton rule. It's a, a rule that we started in chafed and uh, adopted it in fling and basically all the other bands that I play in. It's uh, it's four inches of snow. And more specifically, it's if there are four or more inches of snow predicted to come down in the period of time that we would either be at or driving to or from the gig, any band member has the right to to veto the gig with no peer pressure from anybody else. Um, And of course, like most policies, it was created in you know, retroactively because or in in response to not retroactively, it was created in response to a terrible snowstorm that Chafed played probably ten years ago, where we knew when we were leaving the house that we shouldn't be leaving the house. It was for a Halloween party. Uh, we got about two feet of snow that night. It was about an hour away from all of our houses. Uh, it was a great gig, but you know, uh, and it was a great paying gig. And so, you know, as I was leaving, I'm like, I should cancel this. But, you know, we didn't have this policy in place. And like, you know, it's well, it's a good paying gig. Some of these guys rely on this money for their income. You know, do I want to be the one that pulls this out of their pockets and all of that stuff? And in reality, once we all got to the gig and like settled in and we're eating dinner, every one of us was like, oh, I didn't cancel it because I thought you guys didn't want to cancel. I was like, okay, let's let's I'm going to pause you right there because. (laughs) I'm just thinking about, you know, it's that feeling of getting to the gig and just kind of letting the vibe kind of wash over you, yeah. you know, get, getting connected to your bandmates, you know, the, the little subtle parts of being part of a team like that, Yes, that are so missed, you know, you know, just getting your mojo going, you know, to get ready to do the thing you do. It's that little bit of bonding, which is just part of the joy of of being in a band. You know, that's you know, those are your guys, yeah, or g- guys and girls, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that thing of getting your stuff out of your car, 
Yeah, the, the, into the, the routine. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, being greeted by and greeting your fellow bandmates, unpacking your stuff, plugging in your stuff, you know, just that whole, that, yeah, the routine. So missed. So and missed. So, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, um, it's so, when it's on a, you know, when it's, when it's a one off, it's really wonderful. But when it's a, you know, like when you're in a groove and you're playing a lot. Yes. And the routine is butter, you know. Yep. And it's, there's no stress to it because, you know, right, you're you know just how doing your you thing. And, yeah. 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 So, yeah. You, no, you, you just, you hit me, man. I'm sorry. No, I, you know, it's funny. I, um, we'll get back to the story folks. Uh, I was thinking the same thing. I've been fortunate enough. I mean, I played actually three times in the last week. It was all at the same place. And I'll talk about these final two performances, but, um, but I was thinking today for, uh, for whatever, re oh, I was wrapping some presents or whatever. And I had the cheap trick episode of Daryl's house on, on my computer, it, it, you know, in the office while I was on the floor, like wrapping presents and stuff. This is an episode that I had been trying to watch. I always listen to music while I'm doing work at my desk. And I, th I thought, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, Oh, I'll put this on. Like I've never seen this episode. I couldn't do work and have this episode on. Cause it was, these guys are friends, right? Like uh, the Daryl Hall has, has pretty tight relationships with a few of the guys in cheap trick. And so, uh, so it was, it, yeah, it was impossible to, to have on in the background in, while I was actually trying to work for wrapping presents, it was perfect, but these guys were just cutting up and having fun. And it was like, I really miss band rehearsal. The, 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 you, like you said, the low stress thing, it's not being on stage, not the, perf I mean, I do miss all of that, but I've been able to experience some levels of that, not the same, but you know, some bits and pieces, but band rehearsal has been a thing that I just have not had at yeah. all, you know? And, um, and I was like, man, I really miss just that thing of, you know, in Daryl's house, they show you, they, they got better at it over the years where they really peel back the curtain. They're not just showing you the songs. They're showing you them talking about like, Hey, let's, let's do this for the chorus. You and I should sing this together. We should split this up. Like just those conversations. And it was like, I had exactly the same reaction that you had here, yeah. you know, it was like, crap that I just don't have. And, and here in my rear view mirror, yeah, I can't recall any, oh crap, I got to go to practice. You know, I can't recall any negativity about any of these things we're talking about. Right. It's like, it's just not in my mind at all. Like, no, uh, you know, you've uh, had you them, know, or at least certainly I have, but absolutely. Yep. The, the brain does a good job of filtering out it in sure the time does. of need the bad stuff. <laughs> it does. No, of course it does. Yeah, that's right. That's why you have your second child because you don't remember how, how rough the first one was. Right. Like, I mean, it's the same thing though, but it's like, oh yeah, I really, you know, <laughs> that is funny though. Because many times on days of band practice, it's like, oh, crap, I just finished like a long day. Now I have to go to band practice. And of course, once you get there, you're in it and everything's great. But that transition of, you know, whatever work life is to or day life, whatever that is to, oh, I got to go to band practice. Like if you canceled it, I've always I always say, and this is not true now, but if you call me on 3 p.m. of the day of any gig or any band practice, uh, and tell me it's canceled. You're my favorite person, right? Cause I don't have to do the transition into that mode. Uh, that is definitely not true. I have not experienced any of that at all um, yeah. recently, but that's always how it was. You know, there were very few gigs I can count on uh, probably one hand where if you called me and canceled it, I would have been like really bummed. Otherwise it was like you said, you get into the routine. It's like, Oh, we did this last week. We, did, we you know, we'll do it next week. It's fine. It's like no big deal. Well, Maybe not quite so much, but yeah, we had, we had about two inches of snow last night. Um, so it, it, but it was just really starting to come down at the moment that I had to head out and, and go to the theater to, to, to do this final performance of, of this live stream thing. And, um, it, you know, this week was interesting, uh, for a lot of reasons actually. So Wednesday's gig was, um, was the second one. We played the first one on Sunday after having rehearsed the crap out of it. And I think I said last week on the show that it was, you know, a little, we were worn out by the time it was time to play the gig. You know, we, we rehearsed it a lot. We'd all had different things going on, you know, in our lives outside of, of this. And, and we just, we made it through and we did make it through and, 
and it was like, okay, well, we're, we're rehearsed. Like we, we knew what we needed to know. We made it to the gig. And then we had, you know, two nights off before doing it again. And at, on Tuesday, I was like, this is not going to go well if I don't sit down and like play through some of these difficult things, mm -hmm. you know, cause we talked about it. Like some of these tunes are not like you said, it's the big kids table, you know? And it was like, I got to go play some of these tunes. And I'm thankful that I did because I got to the gig and it was like, right. I got to really work this out. Um, you know, I'm mm -hmm. glad I worked this out. Like these are not just tunes that you can just float through, or at least not that I can float through. I'm not, I'm not that good. And, um, and so, so that was, that was fine. And then Sunday night show went really well. Cause we were all sort of, you know, but that sophomore slump avoiding that sophomore slump is all the second gig is always the dangerous one. You know, you make it through the first and you are hyper aware, everybody's on full alert. And then you get through that and you, and you have this confidence and the confidence is earned. And if you were to play the gig right away, like, you know, like go back to the beginning, let's do it again. Now you, you would be able to leverage that confidence and play the gig. Well, but you know, you take three days off. Well, maybe not as much, you know, you remember the confidence. Do you remember why you had it? <laughs> so, mm. um, but we were able to avoid the sophomore slump. I did have a weird issue this week though. On Wednesday, some of you might hear it in my voice. I'm, I'm congested. On Wednesday, I woke up and had like some sinus pressure behind my right eye. And I thought, oh, okay, it's just allergies or whatever. Still, even though I had, I had, you know, I'm regularly going out and getting tested. I do have these um, rapid tests that I've, I've had here mentioned on the show for, you know, emergency scenarios. And so I tested myself before going to the theater on Wednesday because I certainly didn't want, want to be the one bringing anything uh, into the mix there. And I was, you know, negative. I went to the theater, didn't think much of it until Thursday morning. I was like, wait, I feel exactly the same. No worse, but no better. And for me, it's very rare that allergies would persist like that. I'm quite, actually quite fortunate with allergies. And so I tested myself again, still negative on Thursday, booked a test on Friday, a PCR test, you know, sort of those gold standard tests um, at a place near here that generally does them they're they're linked with uh, mass general in boston and they generally can turn things around in less than 24 hours and so i booked a test there on friday and tested again and obviously and it was negative i think i had five covid tests last week uh, i started to feel like a professional athlete you know where they're just always getting <laughs> tested uh, but it, it, having the ability to get tested like that kept my stress level as low as it possibly could have been through a scenario like that. It was like, okay, I'm just, you know, I would wake up I'm like, yep, I still don't feel good. Okay. I'm going to test myself and, and at least be relatively, there's always the risk of a false negative, but you know, when you get three of them in a row, you start to feel a little less risky, you know, yeah. and, 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 and everything's been fine. It, it, and it is subsiding, whatever it was that I had, I can't imagine how I got a cold a, you know, there's, there's two groups of people that I was exposed to the people in the show and the people, uh, in my house, none of which have had any of these symptoms. So, uh, you know, like where else would I have gotten a cold? And of course, then there's the scary thought. If I did get a cold, well, what could it have been? Yeah. I think we all know the answer. And, and the allergy thing, I, I'm guessing that's what it is. Um, people that I know that suffer from allergies in this area have been suffering from them. But it was, it was a weird experience to go through, especially knowing that I had to be around other people. And I made sure everybody knew what, what was fully transparent with everybody. Like, look, if I, I'm comfortable with this based on, you know, all the results of these tests and everything, but you got to make this decision for you, you know, if, if you're comfortable being around me. And everybody was fine with it. They were like, well, yeah, I mean. Like if we don't trust five tests, what do we trust? Right. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, I, I, that's why I'm okay. But yeah. So it's been very interesting. I don't know where it I, still, you know. The latest I've heard is that those home tests are now getting to be a little bit more available, but they're still 30 bucks, right? I mean, they really need to be five bucks yeah. if people are going to, you know, yeah. wholesale use them. Correct. You know, correct. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was from that standpoint, cause I did, I paid about 30 bucks for him. Um, it was an expensive week from, you know, I mean, I had them in stock. It wasn't like I went and bought them, but I had already paid for them and now I'm depleting my, you know, my stash, uh, but it was totally worth it. 
you know, to spend a hundred bucks on, on yeah. my own tests. Yeah. Peace of mind for sure. Peace of mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I was like, well, this is why I bought them. So, yep. 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 That was fine. That hey, was I want to go back to that, that thought about, um, you know, the joy of rehearsal and connecting mm. with your guys, you know, there, something came out today that, um, that is the personification of that joy. So, you know, uh, Peter Jackson, you know, the Lord of the Rings, director right? yeah he's been working on this beatles documentary called get back and uh he's uh he put out a little sneak peek today he said we wanted to give the fans of the beatles all over the world a holiday treat so we put together this five minute sneak peek at our upcoming theatrical film the beatles get back we hope it will bring a smile to everyone's face and much some needed joy at this difficult time and it is it is pure joy i mean this is as they're recording Get Back and, um, you know, they're goofing around in the rehearsal studio. They're goofing around, you know, in the recording studio. They're goofing around on stage. Paul and John dancing joyously together and being silly together. It is it is a wonderful gift to end 2020 with because it was it was so weird. Um, huh. Yeah. I don't know if you haven't seen it yet, I'm guessing. No, right? I got to. Oh, I definitely want to see this. Wow. It is. It is a injection of joy. I mean, it's just really fantastic. So it's a, it's a documentary, right? Like it's, it's the, it's not actors playing the Beatles. This is the, no, no, no. it's a Beatles documentary. Footage. He right. says they have okay. 56 hours and he says what? the footage is unbelievable. 56 hours of film that they're cutting down into this. Do and he, call, he calls it a documentary. Sure. But the, obviously, you know, what they've done to clean up the quality of the film is staggering i mean first visually it's just incredible wow. there are the beatles in you know 1970 right in front of your eyes in beautiful living color but the little taste that they give you is just the best thing i mean they're working out the song get back paul stops it in rehearsal and ch you know changes the tempo and oh. the guys are just goofing with each other it is it is the happiest thing i think we've gotten in 2020 oh i gotta watch that yeah i yeah. i don't want to pause the show now but i want to pause the show so i can go watch it i'm not <laughs> going to i i but i i'm doing this for run, you folks so run do not walk as soon as we're done here yeah you gotta, you're gonna love it and you're gonna share it with everyone you know psychotos my buddy steve is yeah. the big, one of the biggest beatles fans and joe rizzi i sent it to them right away yeah. joe was like tears in his eyes saying you know they're having a blast and so were we at the time so is and this so, just the the recording of the song get back or is it all i don't let it so. be okay i don't i don't i don't think it's all let it be I don't, and actually i'm not sure i think what it is is it leads up to the rooftop concert i think that yeah that's okay that's what it is but I don't know how many other songs are they sure. feature or show. Sure. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That that would make sense. Yeah. Because I know, as I as I'm like fuzzy on my memory of all this, but I think Get Back was released before the the Let It Be. Like I think it was it was written and recorded as like its own thing, and then became part of Let It Be. Ah. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure somebody out there is going, Dave, you got it wrong. That's great. Write us feedback at <laughs> yeah, podcast.com. We know we love to well, hear about it. Yeah. 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 And actually, if you're going to do that, I have this question. I mean, because again, this footage is they are being so fun with each other. Yeah. D had they announced they're going to break up and, and they knew that this was the end. And so they were having a, you know, a fun farewell together. Right. Or was this just business as usual? And then shortly thereafter, they decided to break up and then it was, acrimonious. So I, I don't know the answer to these things. And if you are a Beatles fan listening, I would love to hear from you guys to, you know, to find out what it is. But all I can tell you is this will be for the four to five of the best minutes of the year for you mm. in terms of musical joy and, you know, musical inspiration. And it's just, it's just great stuff. I mean, four to five of the best minutes after the 50 or so hours of gig gab that you listen to. Obviously. Uh, there you go. Right. Obviously. 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 Right. Present company excluded is, is how we say that. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I got to go watch that. That's good. Uh, all right. So yeah, I, I mean that though, feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Let us know what, what, you know, we, you know, we're, we're music geeks here. We want to, we want to dig in, especially Beatle geeks. So, uh, I, I do want to address this. I want to read this email that, that Dave sent in. But uh, but the first thing I want to do is talk about our sponsor, which is BetterHelp at BetterHelp.com slash gig gab. And BetterHelp is a, this fantastic service where they pair you up 
with your own licensed professional therapist. They have this, this questionnaire that you go through. It's all online. Uh, they assess your needs and match you up. And then you, you, it stays online. You get to connect with your therapist in a safe and private online environment. So it's super convenient. It avoids, you know, the COVID risks of being in a waiting room or even a doctor's office with someone. And it happens quickly. You can start communicating in under 24 hours. And they really pride themselves on matching you up with the making the right matches is perhaps the right way to say it. So if you need to make a change, there's no charge to make a change from one counselor to another. They've got lots in their network here, but they really do get it right the first time, most of the time. And they've got counselors who specialize in things like depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, family conflict, self-esteem, and anything you share with them is confidential. They do a really good job with putting all this together. I encourage you to check it out because we want you to start living a happier life today. And as a Gig Gab listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor, betterhelp.com slash gig gab. Join over a million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, it's better help. H E L P like the Beatles song, right? Better help.com slash gig gab. Our thanks to better help for sponsoring this episode and helping everybody out. All right. Um, Paul, I got a, a note. I I've called him. I've given him two names in this episode. Um, Dave and the Bishop. We spent time on the road together with hypnotic clam bake back in mm. the day as it were. And we all had nicknames on the road, so that's where that what came yours? from. Uh, I was Hambone, so there you go. <laughs> with, a, with a J, so, you know, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but everybody had everybody had nicknames, and Dave liked to play chess. The, the, the other Dave, uh, I wasn't talking about myself in the third person. I did also enjoy playing chess, but he was the one that sort of brought that in. So, so, um, so the bishop, uh, he was crowned. Uh, he writes, he says, uh, hey, Dave and Paul, I have been on a deep dive into online jamming software, and I wonder if you have any insights. He says, so far, I've checked out Jam Kazam, Soundjack, Jacktrip, and Sonobus. They, there have been some moments of unbelievable awesomeness and some moments of unbelievable not awesomeness. Each platform seems to have pluses and minuses and potential for safely playing with other musicians again. On the other hand, of course, trying to remotely troubleshoot Jack Trip on a not tech savvy friend's computer over Zoom is a miserable experience. And if one had to do that for every person in a band, probably wouldn't happen. And so he said, he, we've had a little bit of an email trail and he has dug deep. He says, I've, I've gone really deep with Sound Jack. He says, using a combination and he's a Mac guy. Uh, so the software that I'm about to mention, Sound Jack is cross-platform. The rest of this stuff um, is is Mac. So he says, I use a combination of Black Hole, which is a um, uh, a virtual audio cable type software where you can uh, create endpoints in software so that different apps can talk to each other uh, audibly and send audio back and forth. So using a combination of Black Hole and his RME Babyface interface, he says, I can set up eight stereo live tracks into Logic uncompressed, which I can then mix and record. I haven't tested with a full band, so it's still an experiment, but I can route any input or virtual main stage instrument into Soundjack. It's pretty slick. The other cool one is Sonobus, which requires almost no setup. The interface is amazing. So if you're getting other people up and running, Sonobus might be the way to go. So um, I've dug into this a little bit. Uh, I used Jamulus a few times with Russ to get things going. And I mean, we live all of about, you know, a mile and a half from each other here, maybe, maybe less than that. So theoretically we would have a, and we do have a fairly low latency connection to each other, 20, 30 milliseconds. Uh, Jamulus, we were able to play, but I, we both had to listen more to ourselves than the other guy, because whatever the delays were would cause us to just slow down to a crawl as we were playing. So it was more like, I know he's going to be behind the beat. I'll just keep driving ahead and, and we'll get to the end and it'll be great. And it was 
but I don't know how that would have been with multiple people because of those delays. So, um, but th there are some things out there, right? Like he mentioned, Dave mentioned Jack trip, which is software, but Jack trip has also released their own hardware called Jack trip virtual studio. And I'll put a link in the show notes to that, which just takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. we had, you know, years ago we had uh, Dan Meblin on the show who, and I can't remember the product that he was part of making, but it doesn't exist right now. Uh, right. You know, but it was a similar thing to this Jack trip virtual studio, which was a piece of hardware to do it at the time. Dan and the team that, that put all this together decided it was impossible to do via software and get the latency low enough. Uh, you know, but, but things change specifically the hardware of our computers gets a lot faster and things have changed. So it, it doesn't surprise me that, uh, that Dave is, is able to find software like Soundjack and actually get these things, you know, in as close to real time uh, as is, you know, theoretically possible given the, the latency of the internet connection, you know? Um, so, so I'm, I'm curious. I, I downloaded Soundjack after I got Dave's email and it does look like this might be the way to go. It it's, it is as complex as it makes sense to be given all the things that it would do. I haven't checked out Sonobus, uh, but, but I would like Soundjack. If everybody had a Mac, it would be in your band. It, I think it would be relatively easy because the Mac uses core audio hundred percent of the time, no matter what. And that is the fastest audio. Uh, what uh, what percentage of the, of the unknown is, you know, from your computer versus the connection between his computer versus once you send it out into the ether, you right? Know, how, how well, much, well, right. You can control. I mean, and actually these are not audio is not, is not really CPU intensive stuff, right? Um, no, but you, in order, it, it is to a degree, um, in order to have audio at very low latency, what that really means is you have to have very small buffers in, uh, in order, because you, you, the, the CPU needs a little bit of, of a buffer to process the audio, right? Like if, if there's, if it's trying to do it truly in real time, that's impossible, right? Because the CPU has to do something with it. And so there needs to be a little bit stored in the buffer so that you're hearing something while the CPU is processing the next thing, right? It, 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 it's, it does not happen in real time, but, but that's like that time. If the system is able, is engineered to keep up with it, that time can be very, very low. I mean, all the mixers that exist today are digital mixers, which means that is happening all of the time. And it sure feels like it's all happening in real time. Right. So, yeah. so technologically we are there uh, certainly in embedded systems like a mixer, or, you know, this, this virtual studio, but our computers can do it. In fact, my computer is doing it for me right now. Uh, I'm using logic as our, as our mixer for this show. And I'm hearing my own voice after it's been through logic, not to mention I'm hearing your voice after it's been through logic too. So it's definitely fast enough to do it. In fact, when I, when I moved to the Thunderbolt interface earlier this year, Paul, I had to increase logic's buffer size because I had gotten so used to hearing myself on a little bit of a USB based delay that um, that I, I needed to, to sort of wean myself off of that. Uh, so now I've got it down real low, but, um, but earlier this year I had to have it a little higher. It was, it was freaking me out to hear myself right away. Um, uh, but now I do. So yeah, the heart, the like computers are capable of this, but you need to spend some time with your computer getting it perfectly tweaked so that you sort of tweak out all of those things that cause delays and if you're not someone who does that as a hobby, um, it, you know, that could be frustrating <laughs> for sure. Uh, so, so, uh, but it's doable. But then, like you said, there's the delay between us and you and I have that right now, but it's, you know, it's imperceptible. Yeah. It's 20 to 30 milliseconds, which is, you know, the, I mean, you can start to perceive at about the 30 millisecond mark, maybe a little lower, but, but not really. Um, sorry, I'm dropping things all over the place here. I don't know what's going on with me today. I got a, I got a package. What's that? 
not packets. Not packets. We're not dropping packets. No, 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 no. But, um, but you know, you start adding that 20 milliseconds with everybody. Now, you know, where is the sound going through and is somebody too far away? And now they're on a 60 millisecond internet connection and now you've got a problem, right? So, um, so, but it's, it's doable. And so I'm, I'm curious, Dave, Dave and I might mess around with some of this too and see if we can. Well, it's kind of nice that all these solutions are coming up, you know, just as the vaccine has gotten here and we'll all get back. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not convinced we'll be back, you know, all that soon. I mean, maybe with nine months, right, right. Six to nine months, but still like, you know, plus these solutions, sure. They will be great. If, if let's say, let's say Soundjack works as well as, as we want it to. And we're able to do some of this over the next, you know, six months while, you know, this vaccine sort of starts to spread and we get whatever we need, you know, done on that front. Um, That's great. But past that, you know, it would be cool if you and I could jam together and we don't, right. You know, and so like necessity, the mother of invention, here you go, you know, porn brought you the internet, whether or not you use porn, you know, like, thank, thank goodness. Cause otherwise we couldn't do this show. Right. Like, right. so it, you know, yes, this was the catalyst to people redigging in on this. You know, I mean, think about when, when Dan Meblin and, you know, his, his company were working on this stuff, like who were their customers, right? It, it, like there, there wasn't widespread need for remote jamming software at the time. There were, you know, individual use cases, but not enough for it to be like, yeah, Sweetwater, we're going to buy, you know, a thousand units of that and, and sell them like crazy. Well, today they could sell them like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Right. So if that's there's enough- a use case for, there's definitely a use case for it. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, do you know Mark Alta Cruz? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. our buddy Mark, Mark is a world-class guitarist. And his band, um, uh, so, what, what, you remember something I orchestra? I don't remember the name anyway, of his band. Yeah. His keyboard player was in London and his percussionist was in Africa. And, right. you know, they were, they were the first instance of a truly transnational, you know, collective of musicians that were, you know, doing things in real time together. Yeah. Well, actually not in real time. They would pass around files and, and, and share, but if they could, I'm sure they would. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious, I'm glad, you know, there's, there's silver linings to this pandemic, right? It, it, I don't, I, I don't want to say I'm glad it has gone on as long as it has, but because it has gone on as long as it has, it has provided enough time for people to really dig in and create these solutions and have a lot of users, you know, beating on these things so that the uh, improvements in iterative design can happen very, very quickly. And, right. and I think that's great. You know, again, it's just a silver lining. I wouldn't have picked this, by the way. I don't think any of us would have. But, uh, but it, you know, it is a, a a byproduct of it, which is great. So, yeah, I'm I'm curious to see how it goes. But I do hex I'm, orchestra. That's what it is. Hex orchestra. Hex orchestra. I will. Put, that's Mark's band. All right. Cool. I don't know that I ever even knew that that was the name of his band. Look them up. They're really good. Yeah. I mean, okay. Crazy musicianship. H e x. Is that right? Yep. Okay. All right. I'll make sure to Vernon uh, Reed from Living Cover Color collaborated with them and Oh you know, nice. Oh wow. A bunch of other people. Huh. Yep. Oh, that's very cool. Very cool. All right. I'll put a link to them on Spotify right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so so yeah. So a, again, if any of you have had experience with we, we will we will be talking more about this as time progresses because the, the tech there's way more tech than there was six months ago we did sort of talk about it and was like yep yeah, well here's what exists and hmm, it's not perfect so moving on but we'll talk more about it uh, so let us it know seems like what feedback at giggabpodcast.com sorry go ahead paul yeah yeah, yeah. no i'm sorry uh, you know it seems like the, the solution has to be video plus audio though oh and right. that's that's what soundjack is soundjack is both but not all of them no M- many of them are Audio only. Correct. Correct. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of them, you know, and even those, those like, you know, remote lossless mixing plugins and things like that will say, use this for the audio and then have a zoom call going, you know, with your audio muted so that you can see each other. And that way the folks developing these things can just work on the audio and getting that as you know, latency free and efficient as possible. And then you're doing whatever else you're doing to, to see each other. But I just wonder if zoom is, you know, working on it. And since they've already got the video part of it, 
you would have, have to think, part of it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would assume if they're not working on it, then I would have to assume they're certainly looking at things like this sound Jack and others and being like, all right, whichever one cracks it first, that's the one we acquire. Right. And, and pull it in because that would make life super easy. If it was possible, the problem is it's not, you know, now this is me being my, you know, techie geek, you know, business guy, but look, if I were zoom looking at this, let's say sound Jack is the one, right? Okay, great. It works great. Well, it works great. If you have the right, audio drivers on your computer. If you have the right hardware to link with those audio drivers on your computer, right? There's things that are definitively outside of the control of the software package. So does zoom want to inherit the sort of lackluster customer experience that let's say 50% of the people that are going to try this are going to, are going to have out of the gate. You might be able to get half of those over the hump pretty quickly, but it's still going to be, Oh wait, you're not using ASIO drivers on your windows computer. Well, you have to use ASIO drivers on your windows computer, which by the way, you have to, if you want to have anything mm -hmm. close to low latency uh, audio, but that's not a default thing. Most people that set this up, that's not how that goes. And it's fine for recording things as long as your interface supports zero latency monitoring, but that's sort of a hack. It's a fine hack. If you're just recording parts to add to tracks and, and all of that, but you need, you, you know, this is, this requires more than that. This requires a bi-directional thing that's happening in real time. And so you do need those low level ASIO drivers. So uh, like I said, on the Mac, everything runs through core audio and core audio is super efficient. So, so zoom could do this and target Mac users. I don't know if that is something they want to do, you know, and they, they might, I mean, again, it, 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 it might invite more headaches than zoom is interested in having, you know? Mm. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know. Are they going to make enough money off of musicians? So that's the yeah. other question. So, yeah. I don't know. Paul, I think this is our last episode. We get to say goodbye. 2020 here today. On to bigger and better. On to bigger and better. Yeah. We're, we're going to, we're going to uh, take the, we're going to take the rest of the year off. Which means we just I, you know, recording next week. If you look for a way to say the glass is half full, we went through this crazy stuff. And, you know, yeah. it was great to be able to have our weekly conversations. Great to get feedback and comments, nice comments and, you know, Facebook posts and everything from musicians around the world. So, you know, if, if we want to find something good about 2020, totally. the ability to kind of go through this, empathize with each other, come up with new ideas, you know, just kind of talk it through. That It's been very therapeutic for me. I don't know about you. Oh, uh, dude, same. Like this has kept me, there have definitely been weeks where doing this show, you know, being forced to do this show, not that anybody's twisting my arm, but it's on the schedule. Okay, here we go. Have been the, the only, the first musical thing that I've done in a few days. You know, I've, I've had some periods where it's like, I don't even want to look at my drums because it's like, well, crap, I don't, you know, like we were talking about at the beginning of the episode, I, I don't get to do band rehearsal. I don't get to play and, you know. It's like, well, I'll just ignore them and, you know, move on. Mm -hmm. But um, being able to have these conversations in a scheduled way and talking not just with you, Paul, but, you know, it, it, interacting with all of you out there has really certainly helped me make sure I don't lose track of being a musical person uh, for for more than just a few days, which is great. And has really helped me. So, yeah. yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for, for that. So, yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. So we'll take a week off and then we'll be back at it first week of January, I guess. And then, um, you know, we all start the countdown to getting back to business, right? I, I, I booked a gig today, right? So I, I sent a note to one of our, nice. one of the bookers who, uh, who uh, books us quite a bit. Yep. And yeah. in his thank you back to me, he goes, oh, by the way, I have this date on hold for you. And, you know, and it was great. So mm. there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We're going to we're going to get to it. There is. I don't know about you. Here's my thinking. There's either going to be such demand to get back to normal. Yeah. that pressure is going to be on these, you know, to to accelerate the rollout of the vaccines. And, and it will be a spring thing. Or, you know, given the trajectory right now, it's probably a fall thing. That's that's my current thing. So, you know, I'm I'm. I'm a student of human nature, right? And 
when this thing started and they said, Oh, lockdown for two weeks, that was a big red flag for me because I use two weeks mm -hmm. as the, you know, we talked about this, like two weeks is the right amount of time to get people adapted. And then you tell them it's forever and it's fine or accepted if not fine. Uh, I have no doubt uh, that the, at least many of the people handling the communications for all of this and setting expectations for all of us, for all of this, are far better students uh, and experts of human nature than I would ever hope to be. And if they're saying, you know, June is what everybody has in their head is like, oh yeah, by June, the most of the population, at least here in the U S is going to have had the opportunity to get vaccinated. We'll have enough vaccines. You know, that's when we'll, we might start hitting that point of transmissions are, are, are kept below that, you know, RT one number and all of that stuff. If they're saying June and they're letting us all think June, I think they think it's March, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There, yeah. you know, there's, there's, there's going to be forces at work, dynamics, yeah. economy, you know, uh, and if, if we turn it around and I do, I do think, I think they're going to, I think just the desire it's been a year that will, that will be a year. And, uh, yeah, you know, the world wants to get back. And so if they can, all the, you know, all the you, things you have that, to think that they have sandbagged the, the, yes. the vaccine production, you know, capabilities, right? Well, that's the thing is, you know, I, we know at least on the surface, what the rollout plan in very broad strokes is it's, you know, first responders that are dealing with COVID patients, right? Like, you know, very specifically them, people in long-term care facilities. And then after that, it's, the first responders that are just dealing with everybody else and teachers and things like that. And just the casual little bits of information that sort of trickle into me are things like, Oh yeah, well, you know, certainly by the end of January, all our police here in, in, uh, in Durham will have, have had the vaccine. It's like, Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay. And then I hear rumblings. You know, we have a university in town here who has been on the forefront of, like the whole testing and management of it and really did a remarkable job this semester, but they stood up their own testing lab. And, and so, you know, I'm, I'm going to be teaching a class on podcasting at the university in, uh, in the spring, Paul. So, you know, in, in sort of paying more attention to what the school's doing, sort of just the, the trickle out of information is, Oh, well, we, you know, it seems like probably by, by February, the students are all getting vaccinated and it's like, okay, well that's yeah. way faster then June, you, you know, for a for a relatively low risk group, at least in terms of how that all goes, it's like, oh, that's interesting. OK, now there's been no guarantees of any of this. Right. But but just the way the information's sort of percolating, it seems like th th there's a lot of expectation that this is going to happen way faster than the official communications, which, again, I, like you said, makes sense. They would if I were in their position, I'd massively sandbag this thing. I'd be like, yeah. I hope that within a year Man manage expectations. That's Absolutely. the Scotty principle, right? O under yep. promise, over deliver. Yeah. Heck yeah. The gig I booked today is for the end of uh, September. So well, I think it, you're playing it, that in gig. previous years. Yeah. In previous years, it was a July gig. So yeah. they um, they're, they're playing it safe. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think I'm playing that gig, too. Yeah, I think July gigs, I mean, again, like we talked about, once everybody, like once there is a physical safety thing with the vaccine and, and whatever that is, there's then the healing process, right? Where And trust. Trust. And that's what I mean by the the healing is like healing our our fear of being engaged with, our, like David Shannon had said, right? Like we can touch each other again. Well, if you told me, okay, everybody's been vaccinated. You can touch each other. It's like, I, I think like that person I would be okay touching, but I don't know about that guy, you know, like it's going to take time before I would feel comfortable packed into a sweaty club or a sweaty arena, you know, with it's like sardines with other people that I oh, don't absolutely. know. Absolutely, Right. And I actually, that's, what's going to be interesting. The first big outdoor gigs, I yeah. think there will be some of those people who still, pack up in front of the stage, there will be a lot more people on the peripherals kind of dancing in their own space. Yes. You know, let's let, let those canaries go into yeah. the coal mine <laughs> and, and call me in two weeks and let me know how this goes. Right. Like there, yeah. there will be that just, just because that's how it's going to be that we're humans. So anyway, yeah. yeah. All so right. Anyway, well, Dave, 
Thanks for a great year. You're my buddy. And uh, thanks everybody who's been listening. It is a cathartic thing to be able to talk about this thing that we love to do so much with so many good people. Yeah. And Dave, I'm, I appreciate you and your family. Uh, give my best to Lisa and Merry Christmas, brother. And Merry Christmas to you and Terry and the kids and all of that, man. And thanks. Thank you. And thank everybody for, for being with us for all these years. So yeah, Merry Christmas and happy holidays and happy new year. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. You know, onward we're here onward but do send us those emails feedback at gigapodcast and always be performing always <laughs>